One of the big subjects we talked about yesterday was the need for global business to become more responsible. Uh, and I'm delighted to introduce our next speaker, uh, John Replogle. He is from this company, and I, I showed him this because it's my Burt Bees um, lip balm that I, is, is so worn now that it's proof that I have had this in my pocket for the last year. Um, but he, he basically he joined the company in 2006, and he launched the whole Greater Good CSR program, which is actually at the core of their business. He's a very keen canoeist. He has four young kids. Uh, and importantly today, he was one of our early sponsors, and he made it possible for 10 of you to be here today. So he's somebody who is actually you know, putting into practice how we make global business more socially responsible, and he's going to talk to us about that. So if we could give him a one young world welcome to the stage, please. Thank you, David. Hey, John. Good to see you. Thanks for you that here. shameless plug. <laughs> hey, John. Thank you. Cheers. Buenos dias. Guten Tag. Ni hao ma. Bonjour. Good day. There are a couple of Australians in there that got that last one. What an, oh, very good. Just keep going. What, what, what an incredibly talented group uh, assembled here. Uh, and it is an incredible honor uh, to be able to take 30 minutes of your time uh, to share our story uh, at Burt's Bees and to be able to hopefully uh, give you some more good grist for the mill for your resolutions on how we move forward coming out of here. Before today, how many folks had ever heard of Burt's Bees? All right, terrific. We're getting, we're getting out there. That's great to know. We are a, the leading natural personal care company uh, in the United States. We're still a pretty small to medium-sized business, and we're expanding globally. And what I want to do today is to share our story and to share our journey on becoming a socially responsible global business, to continue to challenge you to think deeply, as you did yesterday, on the role and the responsibility of business and on business leadership, and most importantly, to inspire you to take action. For talent without action is wasted. So let me start by raising a couple of critical questions. Okay. First of all, I want to talk a bit about what the hallmarks of 21st century leadership are today. What does it mean for all of you? What is the world you're going to inherit and lead forward? What's required for success? To pose the question about the role of business and can business shape the communities around them? And let's go further than that, should they? Uh, and finally, you know, do they have an obligation? Do businesses actually have an obligation to be a force for good, a force for change uh, in the world around us? Now, I know you've already started thinking about a lot of these questions, and so I want to try to address them in the next 30 minutes and see if we can't move those uh, very topics forward. Okay? The world we live in today. We live in a dynamic world of constraints. We've talked, you talked yesterday about the role of business, uh, and your resolution called for business to play a role uh, in reducing poverty and resolving the global climate challenge. Uh, and I'd like to go a little bit further. I'd like to say that business actually has a responsibility to address six critical issues. Uh, addressing human rights, that's a role for business. Water shortages and being responsible about one of our most precious assets. About our health crisis, uh, and finding solutions to our global health crisis. To closing the well-being gap by taking fair and humanitarian trade practices to heart. To addressing, indeed, climate change by being a responsible corporate citizen and really monitoring and thinking deeply about our footprint. Uh, and then, importantly, thinking about source of supply so that we do not further imperil the loss of biodiversity. These six elements, I believe, are the challenge 
and the responsibility for business today, be it small, be it local, be it multinational, be it global, for every single business to address and put at the centerpiece of their mission. We must help business redefine the mission and we must do it quickly. This study I find to be incredibly powerful. This is a study that was first undertaken in 1972 and updated again in 2004, and it shows what we are doing to our one shared asset, to the planet that we all share, to the global interdependence that we all face. That as we continue to grow our population, grow our consumption, we are stripping the earth of its natural resources, we are polluting, and ultimately, certainly within your lifetime, potentially within mine, we will face a tipping point. This is why this forum is so critical. We must figure out how together, individually, collectively, we take action on this and we take action quickly. For the six issues I just outlined, if you think they're challenging today, think about what the manifestation of constraints will mean for the world we have in 40 years' time. The time for action is now. So where will we turn to for solutions? How are we going to address this? I believe that we need to form a new social contract and that business needs to be part of that social contract. We need to hold every single business accountable for its social contract. Folks, we live in a global interdependent world where crises are now boundaryless. Take AIDS or SARS or global climate change. And yet, you know, I've heard you discuss government. Government today is not boundaryless. In fact, it is an old form of governance, and it is not flexible and adaptive. It is not going to move fast enough to address these issues. So where do we need to turn for solutions? We need to turn to business. Business today operates beyond national boundaries. Business today has global interests. Business today is fast and flexible. And frankly, business must have a responsibility to shape the outcome before the manifestation of those constraints takes hold. So I want to challenge you with this thought, frankly, and it's the idea that business is predicated on meeting the needs of consumers, right? And consumers are people. So if you think that business is formed to meet the needs of consumers, i.e. people, then you can see business leadership as a call for service. I see my role as CEO of a business as one of servant leader. That's my responsibility as a business leader. So we must turn to business because business, I believe this came up yesterday, is one of the most powerful forces on Earth. Half of the global economies today, the top 50 of the top 100, 50 of those are global corporations, single entities. The power of business is phenomenal. But that responsibility that comes with power must be used wisely. There are 18.8 million people employed across the top 200 corporations. Uh, and an astounding fact, they represent four-fifths of the economic clout of all of humanity. Through business, we can drive solutions. Through business, we must drive solutions. And therefore, every business leader, any of you in this room today, must feel that you have and share this responsibility. Any of you working with, buying from, partnering with business, must help each company locally, nationally, globally understand this awesome power and responsibility to be a force for change and a force for good. In fact, we need to change the mission of business from one of simply share, uh, serving shareholders 
and delivering profit to a mission that is balanced across the triple bottom line that focuses on people, on the planet, and on profitability. That is the ultimate sustainable business model. And what I want to share with you now is a bit about how Burt's Bees has thought about that triple bottom line. And we do that through something we call the greater good. That's our business model. And I'll walk you through how we're taking seriously our social contract, our responsibility to our community and our planet. Our business started from very, very humble roots. Bert was a hippie beekeeper. Roxanne had decided to drop off the grid. The two of them moved to a very small town in northeast United States, a state called Maine. Bert was keeping his bees. Roxanne, a graphic designer, designed his first label. They took, out of necessity, a resourceful approach and from the beeswax created uh, our lip balm and then many, many other natural personal care uh, products. And their mission is now our mission as I lead the business forward some 25 years later. We strive to be the greenest personal care company on earth. That is our foundation and our roots and it continues to fuel us today. And that takes the form of what we call the greater good business model. And I've heard the words transparency shared, and I put this up there for everyone to take, everyone to copy. I hope that others will be inspired by other business, will learn from and adopt our business model. Now, I went to the Harvard Business School where they told you that competitive strategy was all about keeping secrets and keeping close in. So I'm sharing our secret of how we run our business. That's the greater good. Our business has three core tenets. We try to deliver natural health and well-being through our products and the way we make our products. We deliver humanitarian social responsibility by being active and engaged members of our community and thinking about our principles of service. And finally, we take environmental uh, responsibility seriously. And these three orbits, if you will, all center around one thing. One thing that defines our business, which is relationships. We don't see ourselves as separated from the world around us or serving simply one master, the shareholder. Rather, we serve a community. We serve a broad set of stakeholders that includes not only our shareholders, but our consumers, our customers, government agencies, even our competition. We see ourselves as inextricably linked to others around us. And it is this relationship that we nurture every day through our business model. So that's the tenet of our business model. With that, what we try to do then is take a local responsibility in every market in which we operate. Uh, in our home in Durham, North Carolina, here in Swindon, UK, in Adelaide, Australia, in Hong Kong, in any place that we've established a place of business, we try to make an impact in the community around us. And we pledge and move forward on our humanitarian responsibilities in four areas, through employee care and how we treat our employees, uh, through humanitarian rights and thinking about how we source our goods, through animal rights and never testing on animals, uh, and finally through community care by being responsible partners in the communities. And we do so much of that through our partners. And it is our partners, by reaching out and making the boundaries of our business invisible, by building partnerships, we are enriched as a business we gain more from our partners than we give. It's an incredibly rewarding and valuable part of our business model. And what I want to share with you now is how we take that into the heart and soul of our business. We have tried to build this into everything we do. We call this living the greater good. Every single employee, we want 100% engagement 
against our social humanitarian mission. We have a team we call the ECOBEES, and that is an acronym for Environmentally Conscious Organization Bringing Ecologically Empowered Solutions. You all write that down? Ecobees, it is a grassroots team that is thinking consciously about what our footprint is. We've got all of our employee programs linked and aligned so that every single employee of Burt's Bees has exactly the same reward structure, from me to the newest employee. And those rewards are tied to our metrics on sustainability. We reward based on how well we do for our community and for our planet. We have benefits that help not only foster that spirit within the company, but to take it out, to take it out into the community, to take it into homes, uh, to train and develop. Uh, and so we've integrated this into the soul of our company, and we take time then to nurture it. Uh, and every year we close down the entire operation, and we come together as one team, one family, to celebrate our culture. And we call it Culture Day, and I want to share with you what we did last year by getting out in the community, uh, partnering with Habitat for Humanity and with a great organization called Kaboom, and making a difference in the lives of some really precious, underprivileged kids. So let's roll the video. opportunity today to go over and make a change and have a lot of fun in Hope Crossing and we're gonna have a lot more fun in the days ahead as we continue to build what we started last year with the Epps family in Hope Crossing. So let's go build a playground. We're going to find out how to kaboom today. Five homes in five days are being built right here. This is the crescendo of the week. I also promise you also that at the end of the day, your muscles are going to be aching, and your back will be very sore. But the last thing I'm going to promise you that you are going to feel so good. We work hard all day, all week in our jobs. And it's the day that we all leave that and come together as a group and work together to build something. It shows that the company that I work for really cares. It will actually give other companies to say, okay, yeah, we need to go out and support and help our community also. This is one of the best teams that you can have. You know, everybody comes together as one and put together, and try to put together a nice playground for the kids. It's pretty overwhelming, but it's really cool, especially with the heat out here. But you know, at Bird's Bees, we're all about our values, and we like to have and share the behavior that define our values, and we care as one of them. So it's a pretty cool thing to be out here and help people out. Starting to look like a bench. Had to to mandate a water break already, um, just because people aren't taking breaks. I'm just trucking through it. It goes along with our culture, steadfast commitment to the greater good, just improving the community around us and giving back to the community. And I'm very, very proud and excited to work for Burt's Bees and be able to participate in this. It's going to make everybody feel wonderful. It doesn't matter how hot it is. We realize we're doing it for a great call. Uh, when we go home and lay down on our pillows for guys, it's going to make us feel good. We get so much from the community in the area and we're giving back and it's just a great feeling. I think one of the greatest satisfactions I get in my job is to see people from different backgrounds, different walks of life, 
come together for the common good of doing good for somebody else that is less fortunate than we are. We're going to really live two values today. We're going to live the value of steadfast commitment to the greater good because we're going to have fun, but we're going to do good work uh, along the way in changing uh, a community. We, we live by a very simple premise in that uh, that richness of the day fuels us. It unites us, it binds us as an organization, it defines our culture. And I can tell you, uh, not a lot of people on the Burt's Bees team will be able to tell you how much profit we made last year, but they'll all remember the community playground we built and the houses we built with Habitat. And as a result, we've helped to bring to life the first green, uh, environmentally sustainable, affordable housing community uh, in, our, in our state of North Carolina. Uh, by living the value that service is the rent we pay, pay for the privilege of living on this planet. So that's our humanitarian outreach. We also take our environmental uh, goals and responsibility very seriously. A number of years ago, I've been with the company four years, we sat down and we said, what are we trying to do? What's our goal? And we defined what we call a BHAG. Everyone know what a BHAG is? It's an awesome one person. It's a big, hairy, audacious goal. A big, hairy, audacious goal is meant to stretch your mind, to take you places where you don't quite know how you're going to get there, but to set a destination. And we said what we wanted to be was the greenest personal care company on earth. What would that look like by the year 2020? And so we set goals. We wanted every employee engaged in our environmental responsibility initiatives. We wanted a cradle-to-cradle -cradle product, 100% natural, uh, with our packaging either 100% post-consumer recycled or biodegradable. We're making strides on that front. We want green buildings, LEED certified, ISO certified buildings that are cleaner, safer uh, for our employees uh, to uh, work in and have lower footprint. We want to get off the grid. 100% renewable energy is our goal. We've already offset all of our energy, but that's not going far enough. Yes, we've grown our business uh, some 30%. We've cut our energy over the last several years by about 40%. So we're driving down our energy usage, but we want to get to the elusive goal of getting off the grid. And then ultimately we said, we want to be a zero waste to landfill company. So we're taking a systemic look, a cradle to cradle look across all elements of our business. And by the way, this is good business. Um, and I'll use one specific example of waste. We used to pay a lot of money to ship our waste away. And then we started getting serious and looking at it. We separated into waste streams. And before you knew it, we were being paid uh, for our waste. There was gold in our waste. So we've taken a cost center, which was waste, and we turned it into a profit stream. Now, you can't tell me that's not good for the bottom line. So doing good and doing well are linked. Let me tell you a bit about our waste journey. I joined the company, and everyone had talked about what a green business we were. And by a lot of measures, we were. But when we really looked closely at what we were doing, we discovered we were sending some 30 tons of waste to the landfill each and every month. Now, that doesn't feel like the kind of company uh, we'd like to believe we were. And so we set out, and from setting goals and measuring it, we drove it down and down and down. And we got it down to about five tons per month. Now, that's an 85% reduction. The last five tons are the hardest bit. So I want to show you how we're tackling that. And it's by making waste a team sport. 
It's called dumpster diving. And so we have a volunteers, you could call them fanatics, who have organized another culture day where we brought everyone together. We took all of our waste, we laid it out on tarps, and a team went through every single piece of it, and then we marched every single employee through our trash piles. And guess what happened? The lights went on. So I want to show you a little bit about what happened next. Roll the video, please. This is Dumpster Day. We have collected all of the landfill waste that our RTP operation generates for the last two weeks. Today we're sharing it with everyone, so we'll bring all the employees through. There's at least one piece of material in all this that, that every employee is going to recognize and hopefully remember that they put that into a trash can at some point and hopefully we'll spur some thought that maybe we can find another home for these things. Now we're sorting it into basically three categories, stuff that we do currently recycle that should not be in the trash, items that could possibly be recycled if we had an outlet, and then the last pile is things that are truly trash. You can just imagine over an entire year how much room this would take up in a landfill. Well, we've got everyone from marketing to financial forecasting to the safety department to customer care uh, to some of our production employees mixed in. Today's event is designed to educate our employees about the choices we make every day about what we do and don't throw away. The opportunity that we have to make a difference, it's, it's awesome. And we will make a difference. That's from Bad Barb. <laughs> It's definitely an eye-opener and it's something for us to, uh, to work on, both as a company as in, as individuals as well. We must drive sustainability. You put the profit in the bank and the quarter closes. The sustainability lasts forever. What we do impacts us forever. So we measured what we were doing, we set a goal, we took everyone through it, the eye-opening began, and over 18 months we reduced our waste by 85%. And the dumpster dive was 18 months ago. It took us 18 more months to get the last 15% out of the business. And on December of this year past, we became a zero waste landfill manufacturer. Employees want to do the right thing. They need leadership. They need to be inspired. They need clear direction and goals. And they need freedom to succeed. If you create the right culture, the right environment, you will be amazed at what your employees and your team will deliver. I don't take credit for this. This was driven by every employee at Burt's Bees. It's about shaping the environment for your team. It's about leadership. That's where each and every one of you can make a difference. And imagine when a small company like Burt's Bees makes that happen. Can you imagine if each of those top 200 global corporations 
did exactly the same. Do you think we could start to shape the curves differently? We could change the manifestations to the limits of growth. We could begin to solve those crises, those six different issues in front of us. Imagine the power. Imagine it. Now, what are we going to do about it? How do we make a difference? What's it mean for you, right? We face great challenges, but challenges bring opportunity. The glass isn't half empty, it is half full. This is the chance for all of us to shine, to make a difference. Our challenge and challenges and constraints require us to redefine the role of business, for business to form a social contract. We need to form partnerships, pressure, reward systems, and value structures for business to understand this. And each and every one of us can make a difference through social media, through our buying behaviors, through our network of friends. We can make a difference, especially for all of you who work within businesses. There is a tremendous industrial revolution going on. We need to embrace it and seize it. We can accelerate it. We have the power. This is a great forum, a great beginning. Take the model and make it happen. Let's form that new social contract. Let's set out from here with real action and commitment. I want to challenge each and every one of you to think about this deeply and push harder on the business social contract, to think about all the responsibility business must have and think about how you, as business leaders, can take the reins and create compassionate, socially responsible business leadership. And it starts, you are all so bright, by leading with your head as well as your heart. To think globally, but importantly, to act locally, to be a force for change in your communities on every single level to embrace this notion of the triple bottom line and to be a voice within the community of your business to drive new principles of responsible business leadership. Individually, you can change your community. You can change your company. And imagine together what we can do. Together, this forum can change the world. Thanks so much.